Okay, so you've read the title and you're like, Trent, what happened? We we're going so well. We we're getting rid of your pile of shame and you've gone ahead and you've started a new Warhammer army. Well, let me tell you, um, this new army is a solution to my pile of shame. See, I have a whole bunch of models that were in my pile of shame that don't have homes that I really, really love. I love making big monsters. I love making ogres and weird things, especially this guy. And I think I made this guy for Arcane Ugly. And I think they deserve an army. And I was thinking ogre kingdoms, but chaos themed. That would also allow me to field more big models, like uh, whatever this thing is. Actually, this is a dolphin tail that I borrowed from my uh, friend Cameron. Uh, hang on, no. He's got a rider and an arm and a cool sword, right? Um, the big question though is whether we do square bases like the Nurgle ones or we go round bases for Age of Sigma. You can decide that. I should also explain to you where I've been. I have been learning how to screen print, which uh, why I have all these everywhere. Why am I learning to screen print? Lots of reasons, mainly for this. So I can put my logo on packaging, but also see this border on the outside. Yeah, that's a side quest I have going on uh, for making the best sketchbook ever, but I'll explain that later. So what I've really mostly been working on for like the past uh, week and a bit is a secret project I'm not allowed to show you because I signed some things to say I can't, but it, it's cool and you'll probably see it soon. I really like this model, but when I assembled it, I found I had all these gaps in it. And now I'm just trying to cover those up by sculpting my own scales, which I sort of just use the same technique I did with making cobblestone bases. There's probably a much better way of doing this. This model's from the movie, The Relic, by the way, which I haven't seen but if it's any good, let me know and then I can give you a comprehensive review because I know how much you guys really liked my review of War of the Worlds last time. So I'm more than happy to watch this one and tell you my <laughs> feelings. Look, I know I'm gonna look like an idiot wearing sunglasses inside, but I've lost my safety glasses and this is the best alternative. When it comes to posing this head, I'm thinking making him really slouchy will make it extra creepy and weird. And I'm thinking I'll also put a big nose on it because for some reason I have a fascination with putting big noses on all my models. I don't know why. So I'm thinking something like this maybe. Yeah, so he's a real hunchback. Okay, so we're at the point where we need to decide what arms we're gonna put on this guy. And I have a few options. Actually, I have a lot of options and I was quickly going through them. I have this long, scary arm, which, hang on, let me rotate it around. I have this long, scary arm, which, I mean, it doesn't, it looks fine. It's just not exciting. Then I have, <laughs> this big macho arm. And I think it's better because it's a lot simpler and it's uh, more in proportion to the rest of the body. But I don't think it's right. But then <laughs> I 
I found these really tiny, short, stumpy arms, and I think that's fun because I think that's really interesting. <laughs> have little short, stumpy arms, um, and that will just make him look less human and sort of uncanny. So let's go with them. Oh, also, um, I need to swap one of these with a machete, and maybe I'll add some reins down to this guy. Okay, this guy's gonna take ages to cure. But what I've been doing while I wait for models to cure is I've been reading old White Dwarf magazines. Let me show you some cool things I've found. So look, there was a time, well before my time, where Games Workshop was, oh, look at that, green stuff hits the stores. Wow. And that's what I'm using right now. There you go. Um, Ah, oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> these books just get me so, so inspired. Every time I open one, this was, this is a time when Games Workshop was, a, oh, look at that, a scale model of Mordheim. Anyway, there was a time, <laughs> I'm gonna get so distracted doing this. There was a time when Games Workshop was a much more Approach it. Oh, God, does it? I really want to do a starter set or a box set for Arcane Ugly because I really want to do dungeon tiles and stuff as part of it and like punch outs and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, what was I saying? There's a time where Games Workshop was a much more um, human company and they used to show a lot of behind the scenes stuff about how things were made. And whenever I go through these old magazines, I just come away so inspired because you actually feel like you can accomplish this stuff. Chaos Space Marine Obliterator's work in progress. How's that? That's just plastic card and tube. So this is what I'm saying. This, this whole um, Warhammer Magic stuff is what really inspired me to do magic cards for Arcane Ugly because uh, a friend has a set and I've just been Obsessed with them. Um, this statue head is so Inquisitor 28, right? It just, you know, where <laughs> even Jeremy Black Magic Craft doing stuff like this. And this was so long ago. So obviously I'm in Australia and I heard our White Dwarf magazines are slightly different to the rest of the world's. Yeah, see, so this is what I'm saying. Games Workshop is showing their design process. Like that's, that's just balsa wood and green stuff. And like this concept art, I could be drawing that. I am, I, well, I mean, maybe. <laughs> but look, this is the three up thing. So they used to make models three times the size and then have this fancy tech to shrink it down. Seeing this is what really inspires me to make models because this looks achievable. And it's all done by hand. I mean, obviously I, I don't have access to this, this crazy machine, which, you know, you trace over it and, and it cuts out the appropriate size into a mold. But even though I don't have that, we have like 3D scanning and all that sort of stuff. Ah, you know, even seeing like the box art being painted and, so look, that's that's a shot of an actual mold. Like, when, when are you ever gonna see Games Workshop showing you their molds? Never. Uh, uh, this squig off is a rhinoceros toy. I'm doing that now, but with a dolphin, right? <laughs> it's really cold, so this is pretty optimal casting weather. And pull the rest in here. That'll go in the pressure pot. I've been getting a few questions about my pressure pot, like uh, what does it do and where do I get mine from? The answer to the first one is, 
when you put uncured resin in there and you pressurize it, the idea is that the pressurized air is shrinking down any bubbles caught in the resin so teeny tiny that your eyes can barely conceive them, perceive them, conceive that that's a different thing, perceive them. Um, where did I get this pressure pot? Well, this one is homemade and it's made from a pressure paint pot that they use for like painting cars and houses, that sort of stuff. You would fill this with paint and you would have an air gun and you'd pressurize it and you can spray things with it. Uh, with my dad, we just modified it. There's so many tutorials online that can explain things better and more safely than me, um, but we just rearranged things and took off like the gun section of it. And uh, yeah, it seems to work fine. It's rated for 50 PSI and uh, I run it to about 45, so it's under it and that's why I feel confident using it that it's not going to explode, but hey, it's a gangs manufacturer recommendation. So if you wanna do this, do it at your own risk and probably follow someone's tutorial that uh, is more experienced. And um, yeah, don't listen to me. Okay, good morning. Uh, let's kick off with a Q&A. Our question today comes from Oliver C, who asks, how much do you estimate you spent on your Nurgle Diaries army? Very good question. Um, yeah, I try not to think about it, but let's break it down. My Nurgle army, a lot of it I didn't buy. A lot of it I traded parts for or I've collected over time. When I was doing a lot of commission painting, I would just ask for the leftover sprues and stuff, and most of the time I'd get them, and that's what I'd make a lot of these models out of. I'd also make a lot of these models out of Reaper miniatures as well, which are a really affordable way of kit bashing. You just buy two blister packs you like and you smash them together and they're soft plastic. You can cut them up with a knife and minimal tools. Um, what else do I have? I also have like all these WizKids models and stuff. I've used a few of them, but I mean, they're hard plastic. You need a rotary tool to use them, which is a pain in the ass, or you need a hobby saw, not very beginner friendly. Reaper Bones though, really recommend that for beginners. So a lot of the actual bought miniatures are from the cheaper lines. The other stuff I have swapped and traded for, like, I don't know, these giant heads, I definitely swapped uh, giant kits for, for like painting jobs or like flock or I don't know. If you make friends with people that are in the hobby to game rather than paint a model, you can score some pretty good stuff. Also, a lot of the models I sculpted uh, and cast myself. But you have to remember that molding and casting does end up costing a little bit of money too. And I also mold and cast all the custom bases that they're on as well. And there's maybe like $150 worth of resin uh, and silicon across this army. Yeah, it's a confronting number to think of. Um, <laughs> my great unclean one over here, which I get asked a lot about, he is about 110 Australian dollars or something like that. All these numbers are uh, Australian dollar dues, by the way, not whatever fake made up currency you have. Um, yeah, he was about $110, which is not why I bought him, but I mean, it didn't hurt. Uh, I bought him because he was cool. Would I pay the retail price for him? Yes. <laughs> if you're watching Games Workshop, I have all these 3D printed models as well that I've been using for conversions and stuff like this little uh, mole, wear mole, I think. These are all Duncan Lucas sculpts. I also use it like... Here, this body is a Duncan Luca hag. They're like five or ten dollars a model. Really, really good value for 3D printed models because I've printed like 
six, eight, nine, ten, twelve of these mole rats because the body is just so nurgly and delicious to sculpt on top of. How did this army start though? Well, it started with a getting started box and I bought that for about $90, which was, uh, I don't know, cost price. I got it from a hobby shop and I went there with the intention of selling my terrain and um, <laughs> to pay my rent. And then I left with a getting started box. <laughs> Look, I mean, typical me, but it all worked out in the end. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's where all this stuff's from. Uh, all these uh, weird little bits that I've converted, I picked up from um, a local hobby shop uh, in their secondhand section. I just bought bags of it at the time. I maybe spent like $100 in secondhand parts before I started this, plus some extra stuff that I'd been collecting through the years. My bits box was pretty empty before I started buying secondhand bits, before the Nurgle Diary stuff. And uh, all my bits before I started this project were from Mantic Games boxes. What they would do every Black Friday, they would shove all the shit they couldn't sell for the year into one box and then they would sell that to you for a massive discount and you just get random sprues and hero models and monsters and stuff. And uh, that was a really cost effective way to start kit bashing. I don't know if they still do it, but I know that some other companies have done that too. And also some companies, if you follow their Facebook or Instagram, they'll sometimes say, that they're selling bags of their miscast models or by the weight or, you know, things they can't sell to the general public. And that's a really good way of buying bits for conversions as well. They'll normally post about it on Facebook or Instagram, or they'll have it on their shop somewhere if that's something they do regularly enough. Have I gone on for a really long time? Oh, my walking house model. He was about 40 bucks for the kit. I think Duncan Luca sculpted head there, I think was like five or $10. Actually, maybe it was on like sale for like one or $2 or something like that. Anyway, I just love the head so much. Um, and oh, so the other hidden cost about this army is how much I've spent on Milliput and green stuff and every other epoxy brand I've tried. Uh, yeah, there's maybe like 150, maybe even $200 of Milliput and green stuff across this army. Yeah, much cheaper if you buy it in bulk, but it's better to support your local hobby shops if you can afford to. All right, see you soon, everyone. Whew. Okay. What are you doing? Get out of here. I'm busy, I'm working. <laughs> No, actually. <laughs>